racing, cinematic chasing, and long range. Three different machines for three different purposes. But what if you could have one drone that does them all? Is it even possible? John here guys, and today we're here with the 533 Spec 7. This is the new prototype frame that you can actually pre-order now. Check out this seven inch racing slash long range slash cinematic slash chasing quad. This is going to be one of the most multi-purpose devices that we've ever seen. I don't know if I really want to call it a racing machine, but that is what we're thinking it's going to do better than just about anything else in Street League. That's right, they have made this open source in order to comply with the Street League rules. Very soon, you'll be able to buy one of these, build it up, race it on a Street League course, strip off some of the weight, and then you'll be able to cruise at a faster speed than just about any other quad in existence. There are two different arm options, but the long arms can fit up to 8-inch props and some 9-inch props. Check out how the LEDs light up. This is a normal size standoff. This is the gigantic standoff that goes with the 533 spec 7 street league and drl becomes more and more popular quads are becoming larger and larger but what have you noticed about the hardware that actually keeps a drone from crumpling to pieces it has not increased in size as you add more weight you send that weight into a gate or a tree or any type of obstacle and it will crumble these small aluminum standoffs. Son of a bitch did it. This is the first time I've been excited about a frame in a long time. Like, right. I've heard several people say that. I do think that this is gonna take a large majority of the Street League quads next season. Like, it'll probably be the most popular single frame next season. Yeah. Because it's really cool. It's gonna be accessible. People can just go buy it out of the 533 store, like, right, right now. Yep. That's a lot more simple than having to go through. Like, there's a lot of cool open source designs out there. And that's a cool idea that all these frames are out there. You see a frame you like, you can go get the plans for it and get it cut. But it's a little more expensive to do that because you have to go find somebody to cut you a one-off and so you're paying right. for a one-off cut so you don't on, save money yeah. unless you do like a crap ton of money exactly I, because it's a very cool frame it's at a very good competitive price point and they put out good products without a doubt but people also support evan and mondo because of Evan and Mondo, they're just great guys. Right. So I think that we're gonna see a lot of people find this frame like for all those reasons. I think this and a few of the other frame designers, the other Neil's one of them yep. for sure, Catalyst. but like it's growing to the point where the frame designers are, they've always been like sort of hobbyists. Bob's a dentist, right? But now we're paying for like, actual engineering design mm -hmm. and you can kind of tell the difference. I mean, you're really right that this is a design that's completely new, something very exciting in drones. And like I've been in drones for a long time and I've seen a lot and it's been a while since I've been this excited about a frame. So mm. I'm like, I'm so excited to fly it for sure. A true multi-purpose frame. You could use this very large size motor for racing, such as the Street League, Spec League. This is also big enough and light enough to where you could use it for long range, no problem. There's still quite a bit of room in this little stack to fit a GPS or any other accessories that you might want. Now, why would you want to do all of those things compared to a traditional long range or racing street lead frame? What a lot of people are using for those purposes is something like the Source One, a very old but very tough design that works well. But this is going to have a lot of advantages strength-wise, aerodynamic-wise, and be a lot more crash resistant than you might think. Now, it does look very similar shape and scale to a traditional racing frame, but think again, guys, because look at the thickness of these stand-ups right here. Girl, you're thicker than a bowl of oatmeal super thick this hardware on the sides is actually m5 hardware not m3 so the way that this frame is assembled is going to give you much more strength than any frame of this class that we've ever seen before and it has really cool opportunities like mounting these led cob strip lights they come in a very large strip like this and we'll give you a little tutorial 
how to wire these up. Wire these to any two motor pads. You see, I have this one going to this motor pad right here. I'm using the Diatone Race 75 amp and these very large GEP RC 2806.5 1760kV. That's actually going to put me way high kV for the spec, so I'll have to run a significant throttle cut if I did want to race the Street League. This is actually a slightly smaller size motor, but I wanted something a little smaller, lighter, that would possibly break the motors a little bit i wasn't so concerned with max speed at least just to try street league these are the same motors as the rc in power 2806.5 which i've had really good luck with it being very tough look at the really nice motor protection that 533 has installed for you the way that the frame goes together is that these bifurcated arms are actually two different pieces so if you were to break just the front one you're not replacing this whole tire piece and then it has this disc thing that actually joins it together makes the whole thing very super nice and strong. For the video system, I actually have the Ghost Hybrid Duo board in there. So I have two Ghost antennas here and a Ghost video transmitter. I'm using the 533 Nano Camera right here with the Lollipop Foxier antenna right here. So this is not gonna really be for long range with this configuration, but all it would need to do to go to long range would be to add a longer antenna right here and Immersion RC has just come out with their Ghost Ultimate, which would go up to like one watt power. When it comes to actually racing this later on, I'm going to be switching this over to HD zero. I don't wanna break any of that stuff. So for testing, I'm gonna do an analog setup. Look at the size of this top plate. Look at all the mounting holes here. So you could mount 20 by 20, whoop, or 30 by 30 to the top plate for some of those builds. Look how thick this top plate is. Look how thick the middle plate is. Thicker than a snicker. Here comes Yvonne. Look at this guy cruising through here. Man, that frame is made me want to build it and fly it. Right, yeah, same. Yeah, because did you see the source one? I mean, uh, I see this frame and I'm like, I'm gonna build it, yeah. That's the first time I built a drone like in less than 24 hours when it came in the mill. Like, the guys in Dallas, they're racing seven inch and you can see some of their DVR of the racing with LEDs, with the big drones. It's exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward for that too. And maybe they're not as fast as our five inch drones, but that's not the purpose of racing, right? Like we're not drag racing. Couple of crashes so far. Yeah. How do you feel about the durability? It's good. I mean, the only thing that's happened, like you can see that the concrete started to skid down down oh, the yeah, corner yeah, of the yeah. carbon, but like it's just gonna do but that. But that's, that's the nice spot. But you know, yeah, that's just night spot love right there. But everything's still nice and tight, not really moving. I have crashed it several times into the concrete now. She's strong. It felt really cool flying in the air with a couple of them for, for yes. a little bit. I need yeah. to get faster, I need well, to get we'll faster. We'll all get there, we'll get there. Do you think you would use this for long range or cinema stuff? I'm very much excited about having another one that's not weighted down, that's like ready to set up. I know that Mondo's working on a top plate that uses all eight standoffs. So then we have like this more real estate for like cinema type gig. This long arm configuration can fit all the way up to nine inch props. A true lightweight long range spot. I'm excited about like this will be the next time I go into the mountains. It's going to be in one of these for sure. I use the same five inch stack yep. I would use. The frame cost is about the same as any. It's actually cheaper than a lot of premium freestyle frames. True. Three to five dollars more a motor. If you think about that you're going to build this quad and maybe in fifty dollars more than a regular race quad. That's pretty spectacular. Then you can take it and go race street queen. You can strip the weight off of it. You can go do long range. This be a dope freestyle quad just a cruiser. I'm excited to see all the sort of iterations that come from and like what people do with it, but I can just already think about what I'm going to do with it and I'm, I'm pretty excited. Well, let's go fly it some more. Let's get out there. <laughs> <laughs> Fast three. I'm gonna do a build video on his channel. 
I am a furry. Maybe. I'm, if so, I'm lazy. Fly53.com, go get this battery. Not some battery, go get this frame. <laughs> <laughs> the what's your review? <laughs>